four millions of developers today. Docker a Kubernetes is a standard way to build and share applications. In this presentation, I want to take you through the basics of Docker and containers to give you a general overview to help you understand this technology and then potentially start to think about implementing it within your workflow. So I am assuming that you don't have any knowledge at all of containers, Docker, Kubernetes, virtualization, and so on. So we'll try and build a picture in your mind to give you a better idea of these technologies. So by the end of this presentation, I hope for you to be able to answer the question, what is Docker and what are containers? I find that some students can get too bogged down with some of the theory and new concepts when trying to learn Docker and containerization, containers and Kubernetes and so on. So I like to put a picture in your head of a scenario that you're probably familiar with. If you've done any development, you'll know that, for example, building a Django application, you're potentially going to need a database. So you go ahead and install a database onto your operating system, maybe a MySQL or Postgres database. And then to run with Django, you're going to need Python. So maybe on a Windows machine, you want to download Python, the latest version of Python. And then you find out that you're developing an application that maybe needs a message broker. So you install Redis or RabbitMQ, for example. And then you want to test your application before you implement it on a server. So you go ahead and install Nginx or Apache and so on. So as you might imagine, this is just a, a small scale of sometimes a much larger picture in development where we might have to install 10 or 12 or 15 different packages in order to begin our application or to start to develop our application. So in general terms, it's not such a bad problem. Once we've installed everything, we can just get started. But when you start to implement this type of scenario into a, a working environment where there's lots of other developers working on the same project, here potentially we come across some difficulties or some major problems with this type of approach. So a little bit extreme here, but for example, we've installed all these softwares onto our computer and we have a problem with our operating system or computer in general. And of course we lose the environment that we're working with. Of course we can back up, etc. Surprising how many people don't back up their operating system. It can be quite a large undertaking to do that. So that's one of the problems potentially, although a little bit extreme. Potentially, once our operating system um, or computer breaks, we've lost our environment. So like I alluded to, it's okay for us to install all these softwares onto one machine, but maybe we've got two machines. We've got a machine at work and we've got a machine at home, potentially. We want to work in both locations. So here we have to go through the process again of downloading and installing all these softwares again onto our computer and getting it configured exactly the same on all of the machines that we work on. Of course, we can flip this and we can say, well, again, if we're working in a big development team, everyone has to have the same packages. Everyone has to set, have the same software versions, for example, um, so that we create a consistent development approach across the application that we're working on. Just imagine if we had 10 developers and they're all running different versions of Python and had different operating systems, of course, and they're running different versions of Apache or Nginx, et cetera. So we could find that it's difficult for others to replicate problems and troubleshoot problems because they're using different operating systems. They're using different package versions. And we end up with a very kind of inconsistent behavior with our software that we're trying to develop. So the question is, well, what is the solution to having large teams of people uh, and trying to ensure that everyone is working on the same with the same packages and versions? Well, of course, it's, it's not out of question for anyone or everyone to install their own software and just ensure they're use, utilizing the right versions. Of course, that can be achieved. But I guess the question is, well, how can we achieve this solution in an easier way? Well, one way we could achieve this is by utilizing virtualization. So on our computer, we have an operating system installed. So what if, if we could make a box or a container 
inside of our operating system and install another operating system inside of that box and then run that box independently on our existing computer as a new operating system. So we've got many of these virtualization tools whereby we can install these pieces of software and they create these new boxes or containers and we can install an operating system on top of our operating system inside of this container and run it individually in addition to our existing operating system on our computer. Okay, so that's a little bit of a mouthful there. So imagine we've got our hardware here, our general computer hardware, we install our operating system and then we create these containers or boxes inside of our operating system and we install the different operating systems we want to use in these boxes. And that means we can continue using our existing operating system, but run the other operating system in systems in little windows. So for example, I have a VMware installed here and I've created these virtual environments here and I've installed Ubuntu here and Linux and Mac OS. So if I would open up these little boxes, they would appear and you can see that um, when you open up one of these virtual machines they would open up in a small window and I'd be able to work within that window utilizing these operating systems. Okay so hopefully that was clear. The idea here is that if I've created these boxes with operating systems inside of it I can then take this box or this container that holds this operating system and I can back it up. I can save it. I can give it to other people. So what if I were to create a virtual machine and then install say Windows and then I install all the software that I want to use to develop and then I give this virtual machine to other developers and we can then all use exactly the same environment to develop. So that sounds okay but when you consider the fact that for example this Windows virtual box here would be around about 30 or 40 or 50 gig in size it becomes a little bit um, impractical to kind of share this virtual machine with everyone. So let's take a look at why Docker might be a solution to our problem of having multiple softwares that we might need to install and then manage across multiple users within our development team. So the underlying, underlying principles are the same here in that we're going to have our own hardware, our own computer, we're going to have our own operating system, it might be Windows or Linux or Mac OS, and we're going to create these small containers. So Docker, the Docker solution utilizes containers. So these are small containers where we can install individual applications. So this is a general kind of scenario here. We've got our computer, our hardware, we've got our operating system installed, Windows, Linux, etc. And now what we can do is we can install Docker onto our operating system. So we install Docker and then we go ahead and we create small containers. And in each of these containers, we place our particular software that we want to use for our development. So we know that we're going to need a database, so we create a database for that. And then we create a container, sorry, for our, our Python um, version, maybe, or area where we can utilize Python. We then create a container, maybe for Redis, and then we create a container for our database. So here what we can probably see is that Docker is a, a platform, it's a piece of software, but it's a, an operating system level virtualization tool, which helps us deliver software packages called containers. So what Docker is then is a virtualization tool that helps us manage and maintain and create these containers. So essentially for now, let's say um, Docker um, will help us build, maintain and control these containers that we're going to develop for these individual pieces of software that we need for our development. So these individual containers, they are isolated from the operating system. So this means that they are scalable. We can move them around and give them to other developers, for example. And like I said, they are isolated, so they can talk to other containers. So we can get other containers to talk to other containers if we want to. And that's going to be useful when we're obviously utilizing a database and Python, for example, or Redis, because we want to be able to 
allow those containers to communicate with each other. So Docker is going to allow us to, or provide us those type of tools to help us manage these containers and provide that communication between the different containers. So hopefully we've established now that we've got this piece of software Docker and install on our computer and that's going to help us build these small containers these boxes if you like so these isolated boxes that we have on our operating system where we can install individual software now let's remember these containers they are storing or holding our software that we want to use for our development but they are still using the same infrastructure they're still using our hard computer hardware and our operating system it's just that they're contained in these containers these boxes that are stored on our operating system so the containers are isolated like i said from one another and within these containers you think about we can install the software and we can also then configure it however we need it configured for that particular development that we're working on so working with containers, you can see that in general terms, they can be saved. They can be easily backed up. So whereas before we had, for example, virtualization of operating systems. So this view here where we have Windows 10 installed in a virtual machine or Linux and then install all the software. Now we're kind of like breaking this up into smaller chunks. I guess that's what we could view or look at how we're doing this. So we don't need to install this massive operating system. Um, we just need to create smaller um, containers where we can then install individual pieces of software. So naturally these containers are a lot smaller than if we were to build a virtual machine with an operating system on and then install all the software. So that makes these um, containers with these pieces of software within it easily served, saved, backed up, and shared and copied with other developers. Now, of course, we're creating these containers. So what we can do is we can create a library of these containers so that when we're doing another development, we can just take this container off and start using it. And of course, that can speed up development time. Maybe we've made a container which has Django already installed onto it and the basic configuration. Well, that's handy because every time we create a new Django application, we can just uh, utilize a copy of that container and start working straight away. So another benefit of containers is that it's not OS specific so that we can take the container and we can share it with other developers that are using different operating systems. Overall, what we have are small containers that are shareable, that we can save, that we can configure and back up, utilize on multiple developments, share with other developers to ensure that we're working with the same pieces of software when we're developing an application and in a non-OS operating system specific way. So we can work with any operating system. Um, we can work from home or for the home machine and we can work at, um, in the office. It doesn't matter where we're working because we can just pull down our container whenever we need it and start utilizing it. And we can ensure that that container is holding and has the same setup as it was when we finished utilizing the container previously. If we head over to Docker and sign in, it gives us the opportunity to have a look at repositories. So you can see here that um, I've created this very simple container, um, which is called Cheers 2019. It's just one following one of the guides from Docker. And this is a container which I can download and utilize and share with others. Now, of course, I've said that containers are gonna hold software or familiar software that we're gonna need for our development. So if we click on explore here, we can go into this library, this Docker library, where we have pre-existing containers already built. So inside of these containers, you can see we have uh, the popular or most common types of software that you're going to be utilizing. And these are maintained by the respective manufacturers or developers of the softwares. So you can see here that if I wanted to use, for example, Postgres database, all I need to do is uh, go into here and then I just need to pull it down and then I can start utilizing this Postgres container. 
I can go ahead, once I've downloaded this container, I can go ahead and change and configure it and so on and save it and then put that into my own library of containers and then utilize that for further development. Or of course, I can just download this, start utilizing it and then set it up and share it with other developers. So we'll go ahead later in this um, course and have a look at downloading some of these um, containers or utilizing this image, sorry, and um, putting it into containers. So we'll have a look at this later, but this is the general idea here. We, you can see by going through the li this list, you'll probably find the um, software that you're familiar with. And that just saves you time creating these images or these containers that you want to set up with these popular software. So hopefully at this point, you've got a general overview here of what's happening here. We're setting up these containers with software. So the scenario is now that we've got all these containers. So for example, we set up our database container um, or image, and then we create all the configuration and settings, and then we can share it across the development team. User A might be using a MacBook, user B might be using, utilizing Windows. So again, let's just remember, this is all being managed by Docker. So now we've seen some of the benefits of potentially using containers and Docker to, to manage those containers while we're developing. We find that not only containers can be useful for developing, they also have some benefits when we want to start deploying our application. So let's just generalize here and assume that in a general business setup, we may have a development team and also an operations team. So the development team would be creating the application, testing the application, and they would then obviously identify the software that's needed to run the application and potentially then create some setup guides on how the software should be set up and deployed on the server. So the development team might do that and produce these artifacts and then pass them over to the operations team. So the role of the operations team might be to deploy the actual development or the develop software onto the server and then manage and maintain it while it's on the server. So the development team would pass over all the artifacts, instructions and the software to the operations team and they would then try to replicate and actually then deploy the application onto the server. So they need to go through the process of making sure that all the software is in, or dependencies are the right versions. Um, they need to make sure that they've set it up properly following the guides that maybe the development team has provided them. Of course, there's going to be potential problems that occur here so that the development team would probably need to go back or the operations team would need to go back and chat to the development team. And there would need to be some communication and some clarity and some working together in order to get this piece of software that's been developed, deployed successfully onto the server. So by using Docker and Kubernetes technology, we can simplify the actual deployment process. So instead of now the developers passing information across to operations, operations team and development team can work together to build containers. So to build the packages and all the settings, etc., within these kind of containers. And then the containers can then actually then be sent across to the server and deployed automatically. So there's no configuration needed on the server here because we've already packaged up our containers and we've, we've got these ready and we can then deploy them automatically over to the server. So you don't have to go far to see or to find services that will allow you to, to deploy containers. So for example, Amazon's ECS service here, we can deploy Docker containers. Other popular service providers, online service providers or cloud providers, uh, for example, DigitalOcean also provide um, Docker integration directly. So you can um, create a Docker droplet, for example, here and deploy your Docker applications or containers directly onto DigitalOcean. And of course, obviously, Microsoft, if you prefer utilizing the Microsoft cloud services, you can also use Docker on Azure too. So I do hope that was useful. 
Uh, hopefully you've got a general concept and idea of now what is Docker, although we didn't really talk much about it other than to say that Docker is a piece of software that's going to help us manage, build, create uh, containers. And of course, containers is what we're really focused on here. A container being a an individualized box, as I've described it, that we can store on our operating system, that we can install software and configure software within these containers. And then we can package these containers and pre prepare them to share across our development teams so that we, we can all work with the same versions of software, etc. And then, of course, we can go ahead and take these containers and then easily deploy them as if we were utilize them in our development environment. So there's no need for any extra configuration. We can deploy these directly onto our servers and they should obviously work exactly the same as if we were working on our development machine because all the underlying technology configuration has already been provided and set within the container. Thank you very much. Hopefully this was useful. And if there is any feedback here, if you're not entirely sure exactly what was um, spoken about in this tutorial, then please leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you and give you some more information. Like I said, hopefully this was useful and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.